it's quite demeaning to realise that there are an incomprehensible number of things we don't know about our very own planet. The list is really long, and when I say really, I mean really, really long. Sure, the cosmos is far and wide to have an abundance of mysteries, that's understandable, but the Earth is limited. So why don't we know everything about it? The massive Saharan desert is one of the prime mysteries that's baffled the greatest scientific minds. What's beneath its sandy depths? Let's find out. There can't really be anything beneath the sands of the Sahara Desert, right? Right? Well, scientists have discovered evidence of a prehistoric mega lake beneath the sands of the Sahara Desert. Formed around 250,000 years ago, when the Nile River pushed through a low channel near Wadi Tushka, it flooded the eastern Sahara, creating a lake that at its highest level covered more than 42,000 square miles. To put that into perspective, that's about the size of Kentucky right there. Two synthesized images released by NASA's Shuttle Radar Topography Mission showed the relative size of a mega lake in the Sahara Desert reaching 810 feet above sea level and covering 42,000 square miles, and a smaller lake at 623 feet above sea level covering 18,600 square miles. Ted Maxwell, a geologist at the National Air and Space Museum, along with a few colleagues, recently spotted evidence of the lake while studying radar data of Egypt. Using images of wind-blown sediments, which are sediments produced by running water, and bedrock seen by radar beneath the desert sands, the geologist put together the profile of an ancient mega lake. Egypt's extreme climatic and geological conditions enhance the ability of the radar to see distinct subsurface features. Buried channels can be detected as much as 50 feet below the surface of the desert. The Kaseba oasis in southern Egypt is along one of the ancient watercourses discovered by geologists using the Space Shuttle topographic data. Water, at present, is 6.5 to 9.5 feet below the surface. Fish fossils, found in deposits some 250 miles west of the Nile and at 810 feet above sea level as a marker of the lake's highest shoreline, were used by the scientists to estimate that the Nile once flooded the entire Kasiba Tushka depression of Egypt, creating this giant lake. The location of ancient human settlements near the areas of Salima and Tafawi in Egypt correspond to a lake covering some 42,000 square miles. Researchers have found out that having a source of water, like most settlements, would have been desired, hence they existed in that location. The location and elevation of a different set of archaeological sites near Bir Kasiba, 93 miles west of the Nile, found that a second lower level of the lake at 623 feet above sea level could have existed. This one covering an area of some 18,600 square miles. The geologist also used the elevation of the Tushka Channel, through which the water of the Nile once flowed into the desert, as a base level to calculate the size of the second lake. These discovered lakes add to growing evidence of numerous early and middle Pleistocene lakes across North Africa that could have supported human migration patterns, scientists say, but we might not know without solid evidence. Unlike the Eye of Sauron, the Eye of the Sahara actually exists and, for the longest time, this geological marvel was hiding in plain sight. That's because this huge and mysterious geologic formation is pretty hard to spot from ground level, if you're just walking around the desert. It turns out we only really discovered this incredible cartwheel galaxy shape in the sands when we began sending people into space. Here's the weird thing though. Even after we've actually found it, scientists don't really have a clue about it. Well, they sort of do. I mean, we wouldn't really be talking about it if they didn't have some idea about it. You get what I mean, right? Anyway, the Eye of the Sahara, which is geographically known as the Richat Structure, is located in the Western Sahara Desert in Mauritania. On the ground, it's about 25 miles across. 
When the Gemini 4 mission, a four-day orbit around Earth, was being prepared in 1965, the astronauts were asked to take photos of Earth's terrain. According to reports, our space explorers particularly asked to look out for any large circular features which might be the roots of impact structures. Impact craters are geologically important because they tell us about the history of the Earth. It's always good to know how many times space rocks have crashed into our planet. You know, because it can help scientists make predictions about the future. For a long time, scientists did think that the Eye of the Sahara was an impact crater, but they didn't really find enough melted rock to make that guess. The theories that have made way today suggest a much more complicated story behind this geological monument. The main ring structure of the Eye is the eroded remains of what was once a dome of layers of the Earth's crust. Scientists are still questioning the true formation of the Eye of the Sahara, but two Canadian geologists have a working theory about its origins. They think the Eye's formation began more than 100 million years ago as the supercontinent Pangaea was ripped apart by plate tectonics and what are now Africa and South America were being torn away from each other. Molten rock pushed up towards the surface but didn't make it all the way, creating a dome of rock layers, kind of like a zit. This also created lines circling the eye and crossing it. The molten rock also dissolved limestone near the centre of the eye, which collapsed to form a special type of rock called breccia. A little after 100 million years ago, the eye erupted violently. That collapsed the bubble partway, and erosion did the rest of the work to create the eye we know today. The rings are made of different types of rock that erode at different speeds. The paler circle near the center of the eye is volcanic rock created during that explosion. Most modern astronauts are fond of the eye because so much of the Sahara Desert is an unbroken sea of sand. The eye is like a breath of fresh air, visually speaking, and now it's become a key landmark for them. Some believe the Eye of the Sahara is actually the remains of the city of Atlantis, which Plato described as concentric rings of water and land. That's for the historians to decide if it even existed, but even though it's still a mystery, the geological history this formation reveals is way more interesting. For those of you who didn't know, the Saharan was once a vast ocean before it became one of the driest places on Earth. This was a whole while back, around 100 to 50 million years ago. In Wadi al-Hitan in Egypt, evidence of the lost Tethys Ocean can be found. Known as Whale Valley, it's probably one of the best sites for discovering ancient whale fossils, even though it is one of the unlikeliest places researchers could ever look. The fossils here give insights into how whales evolved from land-dwelling creatures to ones that spend their entire lives at sea. As the ancestors of modern whales died in the sea 37 million years ago, their bodies were covered with sediment. And as the crust of the earth rose, their former habitat was turned to land. If you thought these were just regular whales, a team led by Egyptian scientists dug up a 43 million year old fossil in the Sahara Desert in Egypt of a now extinct amphibious four-legged whale. Four-legged whales, the 15 meter long or 50 foot skeletons are being studied by paleontologists. Researchers say this creature had unique features of the skull and that its mandible suggested a capacity for more efficient oral mechanical processing. In other words, these walking whales had a strong raptorial feeding style. Some Jurassic Park stuff right there. Abdullah Gohar, one of the scientists, said, We discovered how fierce and deadly its powerful jaws are capable of tearing up a wide range of prey. This whale was a god of death to most animals that lived in its area. The new whale is called Phaeomycetus anubis, which the scientists named in part after Anubis, the canine-headed Egyptian god associated with mummification and the afterlife. It would have been a pretty effective killer back then, kind of what the killer whale is today. 
More is being researched about these whales, as are the creatures they shared the sea with. Beside the whale bones, the teeth of large and vicious sharks have also been found. These are just a few of the numerous mysteries the Sahara holds. Numerous might be an understatement because there's a lot more and, given the conditions of the desert, researching that part of the planet isn't the easiest thing to do, even with the kinds of technologies we currently have. So what do you think? What more lies beneath the sandy dunes of the Sahara? What really is the eye of the Sahara? And will we ever make the Sahara survivable? Let us know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching Space Age.